Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super comfy on my couch and I want to share with you six simple steps that you can do to refine your personal style. Refine for me is a little bit different to finding your personal style. At this point, I have a pretty good sense of what my style is. But there are times with, you know, seasonal changes, changes in lifestyle, and trying out a lot of new things that makes me question my own personal style. And then I like to go back to this quick six step process to really refine my style and give me more clarity and intention when I'm dressing for the season ahead. The very first thing I like to do is to refine my aesthetic and figure out what I'm drawn to with the help of the three word rule. The three word rule has been very popular on TikTok, on Instagram, where we try to connect different elements of our style and describe it using three words. There is a really helpful word bank online from Mariana and Allison, and it just gives us lots of words to choose from to help us use this rule to find our style. I wanna start from the beginning and share with you how I found my three words and the process that I used. So firstly, I think it's really important to pull together all of our inspiration. Not just things that we've been saving recently, but things we've been saving maybe for the last couple of years and combine that with what's already in our wardrobe. Whatever we bring into our wardrobe says a lot about our aesthetic because obviously there was something we are drawn to. Even if we're not drawn to it right now, the fact that we were drawn to it in the past, I think says something about our aesthetic. So I'm combining the Pinterest photos that I currently have in front of me, what I've saved on Instagram, and what's in my wardrobe. Once everything is together, I like to start drawing connections between what I'm seeing. One of the most obvious things I'm seeing on Pinterest, Instagram, and in my wardrobe is that I save and wear a lot of stripes and plaids. This is something incredibly consistent across all of my inspiration, and it made me realize that I like a little bit of playfulness in my style. I was also seeing lots of bright pops of color, I'm not a super colorful dresser, but I've always loved a pop of color. And for me, that also adds to that playful vibe. I often like outfits that feel a little bit mismatched rather than perfectly uniform. And that mismatched feeling, I think, is also an element of playfulness. So one of the words that stands out to me is playful. If I took a step back and look at my wardrobe as a whole, there is a lot of femininity in the styles I choose to wear. I'm especially looking at pieces like a silk skirt, my blouses. I have a lot of pearls that I like to wear, and a lot of my clothing has a little lace pattern or detail that makes it feel more feminine. All of that is reflected in what I saved both recently and in the past. So another word for me is feminine. And finally, my last word is polish. This kind of explains all the blazers and outerwear pieces that I really love in my wardrobe. It explains my love for different types of trousers over jeans. And it really explains the more put together part of my style. And I think if we combine all of these three words together, it covers almost everything that I like in my wardrobe. Previously, I just looked at a word bank and picked words that resonated with me, which were modern, feminine, oversized. And honestly, these three words don't really have a lot to do with so many of the pieces I like. So if you want this to be really helpful, I recommend going through the whole process to find your three words. This is definitely a rule that I'm using as a general guide rather than something that I'm going to very strictly follow. Now that we know the aesthetic that we really like, I want to focus on the shapes and silhouettes that look best on us, and also the colors that look best on us. I used to really not like the idea of dressing for our body, or, you know, color typing to find our best colors, because I felt like it was restrictive, and it took the fun away from getting dressed every morning. But what I found, having done two color typing sessions now, is that all of the results has actually opened up new ways of dressing for me and it's actually allowed me to experiment more rather than less. I'm going to use color as an example here, but the same thing applies for body shapes and clothing silhouettes. If you don't know what color typing is, there are a lot of different systems, but it's basically to figure out the undertones of your skin, and sometimes you'll use your features as well to work out what are the best colors on you. I recently did a color typing with Miriam Color, and she determined that I was warm and delicate. So there's not a lot of warmth that you can necessarily see when you look at me on my skin tone, but my undertone is still definitely warm. And taking into account my softer features, I don't have a lot of lines or angles, taking into account my darker hair color, eye color, um, and contrast, 
She determined that these are some of my best colors. What I really liked about her approach was how open it was. She said that if you're wearing a color that is not the best on you, you can always use your best colors to try and redeem the look and make it more flattering. So if I'm wearing orange or yellow, which are one of my worst colors because I'm not ultra warm, then I can take one of my best colors, put it close to my face, and still wear that outfit, but in a more flattering way. If I look at it in this way, color typing really hasn't restricted me. I'm still wearing all the colors, but now I have the confidence to know how to make it work for me. There is so much information online, so many quizzes you can do. You can even do a bit of a draping test on yourself where you bring out different fabrics, hold it up against your face, and you kind of use cool fabrics and warm fabrics vibrant fabrics and more muted colors to determine what are your best colors and i'm gonna link some resources down below so you can refer to them if you'd like to do this yourself in step three i'm just creating something a little bit more tangible i'm making a mood board that includes the aesthetic i'm drawn to the colors that work best for me and just a reminder of some silhouettes i can always go back to and if we combine all of these together Whenever I don't know what to wear, I can refer back to this and still wear something that day that feels very true to my style. The idea of this mood board is that it's very, very personal to us because we not only have the three words that encompass pretty much everything we're inspired by, but we also have that additional layer of customization with our personal best colors and personal favorite silhouettes. And whenever I don't know what to wear in the morning, I can refer back to this and get an outfit that is definitely going to fit my style. What I think I'll do is that I'm going to print this out and stick it on the back of my wardrobe as a little bit of a guide whenever I don't know what to wear. The whole point of doing this exercise to find our personal style is that we get ready really easily in the morning without friction and we also come up with outfits we love and this will just be a little reminder and a little guide to refer back to. It's also great because maybe three or four months down the line, when I look at this mood board and I don't feel inspired anymore, it's a reminder that I might need to do this process again just for a bit of a refresh to refine what my personal style is. I'm here in my wardrobe for step four and what I want to do here is to put together a little curation of pieces that I feel like best captures my style right now. What happens for me is that sometimes I know my aesthetic, but when it comes to creating outfits, I struggle to bring that aesthetic into the outfits. So putting together this little curation or this little capsule, I find really helpful because whenever I wear these pieces, the outfit will capture what I have on my mood board. This is a really intuitive process where using my mood board, I'm gonna pick out some of my favorite pieces and these favorite pieces I'll wear the most in the upcoming couple of months. I'll either take these pieces and just put them into the center in my wardrobe or I'll put it onto a separate rail, but I wanna be able to see these pieces really easily when I'm putting together an outfit in the morning. These are a couple of the pieces I chose out. And when I was choosing it out and looking at my mood board, I was thinking to myself, what are the components that I feel like I don't include enough in my outfits right now? Because the color analysis thing is all new to me, I included a few pieces in colors that I was recommended. This blue was recommended to me as one of my better colors. So I wanted to wear this more, of course, and include it in more of my daily outfits because it's more of a casual piece. This is another piece I chose out based on the color. It's in this green shade, which I feel like is quite flattering. So this one I also want to wear a bit more. The shade of red is another color on my palette, but I also like that this piece feels very feminine, very polished. So it has some of the elements of my style words as well. So I thought it would be the perfect piece to wear more in the evening. I have quite a few plaid pieces here, and the reason why I chose these out is because plaid is the thing that I feel like perfectly captures playfulness in my wardrobe. Whenever I'm wearing one of these pieces, the outfit just feels a little bit less serious, and I love that look in my outfits. I wanted to use these to combine with a lot of my basics, to make sure that the playful element is in all of my looks. Because sometimes my looks can be more feminine and more polished rather than playful. The final piece I'm including in this little curation are these boots. I really like that these boots feel very polished once it's on, so it fits that word of mine really well. But it also gives a very feminine line when I'm wearing these. So it encompasses a lot of my words. I really like wearing them right now. So I'm including it in this little curation. I am finally on to step five, and this is where I wanna share with you some outfits. So I'm gonna go from daytime to work to evening. And what I'm trying to do is to create a cohesiveness in these looks. For myself, 
No matter if I'm at work in a meeting or I'm just running some errands, I want to look the same. Like I want to keep my personal style no matter where I go. The way for me to do this is to try and include all three of my words in my outfits. This is a casual work outfit that I feel very, very comfortable wearing. And I feel like it's because all of my words are present. So I'm just gonna tell you which piece is which. The femininity for me comes through in the pearl accents and then also in this very pretty mauve lilac palette that is just a little bit more soft and feminine to me. The playfulness for me is definitely in the color of the pants, but also the fact that it's reinterpreting traditional suiting. And I also feel a drop shoulder with the puff sleeve is a little bit playful as well. Polish for me is in the wool material and then the pointed toe boots. These things feel very sleek and I think it brings more polish to the outfit. This is my work look and I'm gonna change it to my casual. This is my super casual outfit and I'm wearing pretty much all linen materials. So the top and the bottom are both linen blend fabrics. Everything is very slouchy and soft. So it's really comfortable and casual. If we're comparing the trousers to other casual pieces like a sweatpant, it still has a degree of polish to it. So the trousers still make me feel fairly polished considering this is a very casual look. The femininity is in the color palette of this outfit. Everything is very delicate and soft with the creams and then the light taupe, pinks and blues of the outfit. The element that is hardest for me to include in my outfit is playfulness. We've got a little bit of the pastel colors and the stripes on the pants, but I wanted to make the playfulness stand out a bit more. So I just added in a pop of color with my necklace. A pop of color always feels a bit playful, a bit fun. So I feel like playfulness comes out a bit more once I've added in this piece. I feel like evening for me is always the one that I struggle the most with. So with this dress in itself, I feel like it includes a lot of the elements of my style. The silk and the color makes it feel very polished and feminine without me really having to do anything. Even in the design of the dress, the fact that it's got this open back design, I feel like makes it feel a little bit playful because it's unexpected. And the same thing with the bow sleeves, it just adds a little bit of a fun kind of twist to this more elegant silk dress. In my own styling, I've also paired it with a more casual necklace because I feel like it's a very playful element to add to a nighttime look. A little unexpected, it doesn't really match, but I think I like that mismatch feel. This is my evening look, and I often don't love my evening looks, but this one I do feel really comfortable in. After going through steps one to five, I feel like I have a very good grasp of what my personal style is. And step six for me is all about mixing and matching. So we're constantly learning new things about our style and we're constantly getting new outfits to try and to wear to keep things feeling really fresh and interesting. I have a little go-to list here of some of the things that I really like to do when I'm mixing and matching. And hopefully this can be a bit of a starting point if you don't feel super confident mixing and matching in your wardrobe. We should definitely be referring to the mood board we created earlier, but one of the things that helps me mix and match is to constantly turn inspiration into outfits. I used to just look at outfits I like and then just pass over it, but ever since I started learning what I liked about outfits and recreating that, it's been the absolute game changer in coming up with new outfits to wear. I often see an outfit I love, I then try to pinpoint what I like about it and then I recreate it in my wardrobe. I'll link to some of my Pinterest videos where I do this in a lot more detail, but it's not about recreating the whole look, but just a small section of what you were really drawn to. For more tangible ideas, if you want to experiment more, here are some things I think are good to start with. For color, I love to play with complementary color combinations, and it doesn't always have to be super vibrant or bright. I love a light blue with a brown because they're on opposite sides. I love a blue and orange. I love a blue and yellow. But playing with colors on opposite sides is incredibly fun. And oftentimes, the looks are not even very dramatic. You can mix these colors in really subtle ways, but still get a really beautiful color combination. So you don't have to do blue and brown. You can choose any colors that are on opposite sides and see how you can make that work in your wardrobe. Whatever colors you choose, complementary colors are all tried and tested colors that go together, so you can't really go wrong. Something I love to do when I'm wearing neutrals is to mix at least three neutrals together. So instead of doing black and white or just navy and white, I like to add in a brown somewhere or just a gray somewhere and have enough dimension in my neutral outfits. This is something that I find so helpful because once you get used to mixing all the neutral tones together, all your neutral pieces are just so flexible to go together 
in any combination. When it comes to mixing and matching silhouettes, I'm often focusing on balance. So going for one piece that is more structured and another piece that's more flowy, or I'm going for one piece that's more oversized and something else that's a bit more tight. But basically, I always start off with one main piece and then I'll match it to something else in my wardrobe that I feel like complements it to create a very balanced silhouette. So for this outfit example, the inside pieces are a little bit softer and then the piece that has a lot of structure and shape is the blazer. So it's a really good balance of shapes. In these outfits, because I have on a flowy trouser, I don't want to do a very oversized top. So I'll either go for something like a t-shirt that's very simple or I'll go for something a bit more form-fitting to bring balance to the look. And once you kind of figure out some of your favorite silhouettes, it's super easy just to mix and match really freely in your wardrobe and this is where a lot of the things that we figured out in the earlier steps really helps us mix and match more easily in our wardrobe. If I put on the outfit and it feels a bit underwhelming, oftentimes it's because I'm missing a component of my style in the look. So I go back to my three words and usually I'll find that one of the words is missing. So the outfit feels not quite like my own style. And one or two tweaks is usually all I need to make that outfit into something I would happily wear out. Those were the six steps I recently did to refine my own personal style. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Something I'd love to know from you is what are your three words? I'm genuinely so curious to know what your style is. So if you have your three words or you think you might know what your three words are, let me know in the comments below and I'd love to see. Thank you again for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, I would love for you to go hit the subscribe down below. Um, follow me over on Instagram if you'd like to see more daily outfit ideas. And I will see you next week with a new video. Bye.